Hey everyone, this is Andrew or Z from customsbyz.com. What I'm going to do for you today is a little quick styrene building tutorial with some of my tips and tricks. Uh, this was voted on by some of my fans on Facebook as the tutorial they wanted to see the most. Um, so to begin, styrene. For those of you that don't know what styrene is uh, or haven't really played with it, basically that's what this stuff is right here, this white plastic material. Pretty flexible. Um, comes in different sizes, different thicknesses. Uh, you can see how thick this piece is here compared to this piece. Um, a lot of times you'll see it in a package like this, Evergreen Scale Models. I use many different brands. Um, this is one I've had for years. I buy it in bulk now, um, which is huge, heavy packages of it, and you get it at a discount. You can get it at any plastic supplier uh, near your house or any hobby shop should carry this. Model train stores carry it. Um, it's a great, great thing uh, for customizing. Um, as I said, it comes in different shapes, different sizes. Uh, here's a circular piece, a uh, circular tube. Here's an I-beam. Um, comes in cubes. One of the most important pieces is going to be is basically an L-channel. Um, and here's a thicker I-beam. Uh, what I'll do first is I'll go over some of the tools I have that are absolute musts when working with styrene. First thing, this is called a speed square. What this allows you to do is it hooks to the end of your workbench and you put a piece of thin styrene underneath and it will give you a 90 degree cut uh, every time as long as you line it up with some reference point. Um, it's an absolute necessity if you're working with styrene um, on heavy amounts, uh, I, would, I would say. Second thing, to make the cut, good old uh, regular old X-Acto knife. Uh, this is an 11 blades, kind of beat up, but it will get the job done and I'll show you how to use it uh, to make really easy cuts in a second. Third thing, for a little bit thicker pieces of styrene, this is a, a linoleum flooring cutter or plastic cutter. Uh, basically what this does is there's a little point here and what you do is you'll drag this across the surface of the styrene. It'll make a, uh, an incision and you'll break the styrene, make nice clean cuts. You can get this at any home improvement store, uh, hardware store, Home Depot, Lowe's in the linoleum flooring section. Cost you a couple bucks. Next thing, uh, nail file, emery board, any kind of sandpaper with a hard backing on it. Um, this will help you just kind of soften up some of the edges as you're, you're assembling uh, to make sure everything is nice and even. Along the lines of that, what I've done is I've taken some standard sandpaper uh, grits and I've wrapped them around blocks of wood, and, uh, put spray adhesive on the back and stuck them to it. What this allows you to do is sand at a 90 degree angle. Uh, very, very important. Like I said, I have different uh, grits of sandpaper all throughout. Um, another good tool along the lines of sanding is just basic steel wool. Um, this is kind of softer than, than the hardwood sanding, so it'll let, allow you to uh, bevel some edges, round some edges uh, pretty quickly. Um, another thing I like to use is, these are uh, little pliers, but they're flat. Uh, I believe they're called lineman's pliers. Uh, what you'll use this for is when you go to make a break on a section, it'll break it nice and flat instead of giving a jagged edge. And then this is probably my f absolute favorite tool of the whole bunch. This is actually a styrene cutter. Um, and what this allows you to do, it's got a huge, massive blade on it. Uh, take your finger off if you're not careful. But I don't know if you can see on here, I don't know if it's focusing or not. Uh, it actually gives you angles 45 degrees, 60 degrees, 75, 90, 105, 120. You can put a piece of styrene here, and as long as you line it up with that line, you cut it, it'll give you that perfect angle. Uh, it takes a lot, a lot of the guesswork out of cutting styrene. Uh, that being said, let me show you some of my tips and techniques that I use. Okay, what I'm going to show first is some basic cutting techniques with styrene. Um, what I have here is a pretty uh, thin piece of styrene. Um, what most people don't know is actually how easy it is to score and cut uh, styrene. And that's right, I did say score. A lot of people think that you really have to cut through multiple times with your X-Acto knife or blade, uh, when in reality all you have to make is a really thin um, scrape across the surface. Let me show you that. So basically if you want to just cut this piece in half, all you do is just draw a thin line right across the middle of it, pick it up, snaps it in half. What it does is it gives you a perfect straight incision every time, um, which is a really nice thing uh, with styrene. Uh, another thing I'm going to show you guys too is this is one of my many styrene junk bins. I never throw away a piece of junk styrene. Um, you never know when you need it as a filler or as a support or something. So I have um, 
probably 15 of these bins now um, throughout my work area, my office, my bedroom. <laughs> uh, so let me show you another little technique. Um, I know I brought up this plastic score. Um, it works in the same way as does the exacto blade. However, it works much, much better on thicker pieces of styrene. So here, I mean, you can see that this is uh, probably a quarter inch thick styrene. This is very hard to cut through. Um, generally, I like to use this with a ruler or so. You'll have to bear with me because I'm right-handed. Um, and basically what I'll do is I'll line up my cut and I just take this and I score right along the edge. And what you'll get, it's going to be hard to see, but there's a really thin score line and you'll see the plastic that pulled out from there. And along the same lines as before, you just snap and it gives you a perfectly nice clean cut. Um, next thing I can show you is basically the speed square, um, which I'm sure there are some questions about. But as I said before, the speed square can sit up straight because it's got this flat panel and what that's made to do is hook right onto your workbench. So what you do with this is whatever kind of cut you want, line it up with a reference point which is on my board here and then you say same thing as before. Just take your blade, make a, th a real thin score without it sliding, and break it up and there's your thin cut. Um, I'll show you this too. This is again my favorite tool. This is this actual styrene cutter for angles. Um, so if I take a long piece that I want to do, let's say a 45 degree cut on, I line it right up against this fence here. I put it in, snap down, perfect 45 degree cut. Let's say you want a 75 degree cut. Same thing, line it up right against the 70 degree line or 75 degree line, 75 degree cut. And what that's good for is when you're actually making boxes or making supports or making um, window frames. For example, the sound wave that I currently have up for auction, um, you can see on his chest he has his, his uh, chest box. That was made using 45 degree angles with that cut to fuse them together, kind of like a picture frame or uh, molding. Um, and I'll show you some more of that as we go along. So with the cutting down, um, what I'm going to do is some really, really basic assembly. Uh, and this is where some of my strategies and my own personal experience comes in. Um, I only use three types of adhesives, really two, but I have one uh, that I use for quick situations. And that's basically good old standard uh, super glue. And I, I, it has to be the gel. Uh, I don't mess around with the liquid super glue um, if I need to put two pieces together real quick because uh, it runs all over the place. This is not the best stuff to hold styrene. It'll hold it. Um, what I generally do is, is I use this to tack something down and then I'll come back with the stronger adhesives. Um, but this is always good to have in the arsenal. The second thing, plastic fusion. This stuff is absolutely amazing with any type of plastic. Um, it's made specifically for plastic. And what it actually does is uh, when you mix these two chemicals together, it forms a um, kind of like a, an, a, a, um, a disintegrative type of, of adhesive. What it does, it melts the, the top layer of the plastic you're putting it on. So what, what it'll do is it, it'll melt and fuse any two plastic pieces together. This stuff is impossible to pull apart once cured. Um, the good thing is it takes about 10 minutes to set. Um, and you know, it's, I think it says 24 hours for full cure. There's no way. Um, it fully cures in two, three hours, if that. Um, and like I said, it's got up to 4,000 pounds per square inch of strength. Uh, it is, once you have this on something and it's done drying, you're never, you're never getting it apart again. Um, this is my favorite stuff. I buy this stuff 100 packages at a time um, when I know I need it. So I highly recommend any, any kind, not just with styrene, any type of plastic adhesive, um, this is the stuff to get. So, uh, And then, this is the trick that most people don't know about. People that use styrene do, but uh, beginners really don't. I specifically use something called Ambroid Pro Weld. And what this is, is a professional plastic welder for styrene, butyrate, ABS, and acrylic. Uh, Lucite and plexiglass. This is a liquid. It is water. Um, and what you basically do is you take two pieces of styrene. Let me get two big pieces so you can see. Let's take these two. What you basically do with this, you can see some plastic weld on the back of there. Um, 
you, you set the joint up as you want it. So for example, if I want to do a 90 degree angle like a wall, you take this stuff out and it's on a brush and all you do is you run it right along, right along your joint. And you sit there and count for 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And voila. This stuff, again, melts the styrene uh, together and it, it forms a permanent and very, very strong bond. Um, I always like to hit it multiple times with uh, you know, a good amount of the, the Pro Weld to make sure that it's uh, secure. Um, now that alone uh, goes into some of my assembly uh, tips and tricks. This alone, strong, but not strong enough to support any kind of structure. When you want to get into structure building with styrene, your best friends, just like in the steel uh, industry and housing, I-beams. It's basically exactly what it says. It's an I. I-beams and square channels. What I would do with the square channel to reinforce this wall, take my handy styrene cutter, make a junk cut, throw it right up in there, and then hit both surfaces, both bonding surfaces with a couple swipes of the Pro Weld. Hold that there for a couple of seconds uh, or so. And you, what you'll see is when you push it down, you'll actually see some of the melted styrene squirt out, which is good. We can go back and clean that up uh, another time. But now that is, I mean, that will support structure. Uh, and that's how you get into building different sections of figures. Um, you know, my, the Megatron G.I. Joe crossover I did was made, ma the majority of it was made out of styrene pieces, his leg panels. And if you were to crack it open and look inside, this is what you would see, all these type of support beams. Uh, this is one of the most important things um, you can do when actually building structure. Now, if your surface area doesn't allow for something that big uh, to be a support thing, that's where the L channels come in. Base all is an L. Push that right up against both surfaces and put a little bit of the Pro Weld on there and it'll give you an unbelievably strong joint um, with any any type of plastic. Actually, um, you know, I said that the plastic fusion stuff you could use on any plastic. This you really can use on any plastic because transformers, most transformers these days are made out of ABS plastic. So this will actually melt sections um, of ABS plastic together. Uh, takes a little bit longer with ABS than it does with styrene. Um, but it's, it, this is amazing stuff. It's not the easiest stuff to find, this specific brand. Uh, I think I ordered this out of the Micromark catalog. One of my local hobby shops, is, which is one of the biggest in the country, uh, stocks this. And they know whenever they get a, a shipment and I go and pretty much buy them out um, of that. So, um, next part I'm going to show you some aspects of cleaning up the styrene after you make joints. Okay, so cleaning up um, some joints or areas built with styrene. As you can see here, this is a chest and torso section for a masterpiece sound wave that I'm building for a commission. Actually, it's one of several that I'm building. Um, what you can see here is a little bit how I, how I do the sliding uh, feature for the torso, which can be seen here. Um, slides up, slides down. Um, and in that aspect, you can see here that I actually have the stock plastic from the knockoff sound wave figure, which is this blue, uh, adhered to the styrene pretty well. And basically, if you look close, what you can see in there is you can see a lot of, there's like yellow kind of stuff sticking out. That is the, the plastic fusion I mentioned. Uh, what I did is I tacked it on uh, with some of this Pro Weld, and then I really squirted behind there some of that plastic fusion. Now, I would have to take a saw to get this part out um, and it's really only bonded by these three areas on the, on the knockoff part of the transformer. Uh, when I put this on I purposefully made the styrene stick out a little bit farther than the blue area. Uh, I did that so I could get a definite flush surface when done. Um, this will bring you back to some of my sanding blocks I did. Uh, now you could use sandpaper here, but the problem with sandpaper is you have a tendency to curl it as you sand So you're going to get a rounded edge with this because it's wood. You've got that perfect 90 degree angle uh, And basically all I would do is I would just take it and I would run it Back and forth so you get a nice flat flush surface. I did that on all three areas here So I mean that is a perfectly smooth surface now 
um, that will accept the sliding mechanism uh, for the waste area, which I don't know what I did with at the moment. Uh, here's the, oh, here, that's right here. <clears throat> so basically, you can see in here too, it's another great example of styrene. Um, he had two portholes right here that I filled with the plastic fusion and I backed with styrene in the inside and sanded them completely flush and smooth. I also added a section right here inside the, the crotch. Um, this will be the front of the crotch. Uh, actually, that'll be the back. This will be the front of the crotch when sealed. Um, and what this will, this big hunk, this is probably four pieces of quarter inch styrene squares uh, all stacked together with plastic fusion. And what this will do is it'll sit on the sound wave and this will become the sliding waste area. Um, but again, there's, I mean, I, I can pull on this as hard as I want. That is not coming apart um, without it being broken. Um, another aspect I talked about, the picture framing. Um, you can see here I took a piece of stock styrene and I cut it into um, 45 degree angles to match the contours of his chest plate. And what will be going in here um, is, you know, an opening mechanism for one of the, the tapes to sit in. Um, and what I basically did with this is I just took a, a, a piece of styrene, which I'm going to show you in a second, and I put it on there a little bit longer than I used my blade to cut. And then I went in with my angle again, kept it flat, and sanded that nice and smooth. Um, and again, I, I, could, I could pull this for hours and it won't come apart without breaking the actual blue plastic off of it. Um, so you can see a little bit how everything will sit together um, once, I, once I get them together. And it kind of, it's amazing too because you don't really see the big picture when it's all white, but when it's all painted up, you can't tell that there's any styrene there. I mean, as you can see, I don't know if this is in focus, but basically you're looking at this part right here and this part right here. Um, so what I'm going to show you now is a real quick way uh, using my styrene cutter to make what I call the picture frame. Nice long st uh, strip of styrene. So I'm going to put it on here. I'm going to come up and I'm going to put the 45 degree angle on. And I'm going to nip it off. So then I'll come over here, flip it over. And I'll get another 45 degree angle. Cut that. So now you have a piece that looks like this, which looks like the top or side of a picture frame. Then what you do is, because you already made a 45 degree cut, you have a perfectly uh, matched mating side. And you're just going to stick them together. And I'm going to take a real thin application of that glue. You're going to push it together till it squirts out. Give it a count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There you go. So as you see, that, that is pretty well welded on there. Um, it's not perfectly dry yet. Like I said, you're going to give this probably 20 minutes to a half an hour to, to dry. But you can continue building, uh, making more sides of a picture frame if you wanted to. Um, it's not going to come apart unless you really uh, screw it up. But again, I'll go right here. Uh, the, and like I said, the good thing about the styrene cutter, it gives you those angles, those perfect, perfect angles. So nothing looks sloppy, nothing looks um, amateurish when made. Um, I don't think I got enough on there. I know my hand's blocking, I apologize. So we're going to push that together. Let that sit. And there you go. So, that, I mean, that's basically how I do um, my building of, of styrene. Measurements are important. Always get your angles right. Always get your um, the application of how you want something done right. It's better to cut less than cut more. You can always go back and sand off areas. Um, like I said before, when you get these things fused, you'll see a little bit of bubbling coming up, which is the melted styrene. That's where this comes in handy again. You just lay it down flat, sand that stuff off, and it'll be nice and smooth. Styrene sands unbelievably well. Um, I don't recommend using power sanding with it though, however, because it will melt. It's a plastic. Um, you know, a lot of people have a Dremel. Uh, a lot of people have belt sanders, but it, it'll melt uh, the styrene. You've got these bubbly pieces that you have to break off. Then you're going to go back and hand sand anyway. Uh, another tool that I didn't show you is this. It's a toothbrush. And basically what I did is I ripped the bristles out of the toothbrush and I took um, pieces of Velcro, put the teeth side on the toothbrush and put the uh, padded side on here with a piece of adhesive um, 
sandpaper on it. And basically what this will do, it'll give you a nice, it's not going to take stock off, but it's going to give you a smoothing aspect. Um, and I got the, the base charger one so I can have it for forever basically. Uh, it's a little tight squeeze tool. Um, so that's the basics of styrene building. I know I didn't get into much on um, how I actually build uh, different things. Um, if you give me one second, I'm going to run back and get a project that I've had on hold for almost a year now that uh, is inherently all styrene. Um, and I think you'll be pretty amazed with actually what you see. So give me a second, I'll be right back. All right. I could not fit the whole guy on my workbench. He's um, entirely too tall. But what you can see sitting in front of you, um, and as I move the camera down and around, is a masterpiece scale um, action master devastator I'm building. He's not going to be transformable. He's just going to be a masterpiece scale replica of what uh, devastator in a comic series and, and cartoon looked like. Don't ask me why I'm building this. It was just something I've always wanted to do. I wanted to see devastator in masterpiece scale. But as you can see, his entire thighs, his his whole hip area, his crotch, a lot of the aspects around the uh, vehicles on the bottom are all built out of styrene. Um, and then this stuff is, is, like I said, super, super strong. Um, nice and smooth sanded. I got the details in there. Um, flapped hinges. Um, let me see if I can show you some stuff on Mixmaster. I don't know if I can focus in on the details. Uh, bear with me for a second. Um, I don't know if they're going to show up all that well, but you can kind of see if I block that light. You can kind of see some of the basic details I've started to put on Mixmaster. Um, he's kind of the Devastator's kind of been on hold. Um, I ran into some aspects where people were asking me to take on commissions with the Dark of the Moon coming out, um, so I kind of put him on hold uh, to do some of them. Um, but I hopefully will get back to him um, in the very very near future. I'd like to get him complete within the next year or so. Um, but he's going to be unbelievably stable. And he's just going to be monstrous. Um, don't know where I'm going to put him, but uh, I think it'll be a cool project uh, once finished. So with that, um, pretty much this tutorial is going to end. If you have any questions, always feel free to, to email me at info at customsbyz.com or you can get in touch with me on uh, procustomizers.com or TFW. Thanks.